from MMA Buzz. I'm here to do an interview with uh, someone I consider a good training partner of mine in the past, and I'd like to call a friend, uh, Josh Huber here. How you doing? So uh, first question I'm going to ask you, Josh, and uh, this is a stereotypical question you hear from people when they talk to fighters, is what got you into MMA? Uh, basically, I was a big fan, you know, I was an MMA junkie watching it all the time, and I went down to the local fights, and uh, I said, these guys aren't that bad, I can fight these guys, <laughs> and it all started like that. So, you know, you've, you've had some up and downs in your career and everything, and what would you consider uh, one of the hardest lessons you learned in your career? Uh, that'd be my first fight, you know, I took my first fight with two weeks of MMA training and I got smoked, you know, and that taught me humility right off the bat, you know, and taught me a lot about hard work and, you know, experience is key in this sport, you know. Now, in, in reverse of that, what would you say is one of the highest moments in your career, you know? Um, my highest moment would be when I uh, knocked out Santana Martinez to get my first belt, you know, it was 19 second knockout and he was a big favorite, you know, just beating Dwan West, who's got like 30 pounds on me. So I was real nervous for that fight, and I came out swinging, and it was nice to get that victory. Now, you know, you know, it's that motivation that you know from personally training with you. I mean, there's been times where, like, I was like questioning myself. I was in uh, out of my comfort zone, and, and you distinctly, I remember hearing your voice, like, you know, hey, Zachary, you know. You don't suck it up, rah, 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 and this is that ferocity that you bring into it. What gives you that drive in MMA to make you, you know, in training, you know, losing your first fight, coming back, you know, even harder? What, what is it in you that you think gives you that, that, that ability, that well, drive? I've always been uh, a really competitive guy, you know, I hate losing. I got a ton of brothers, you know, I got beat up a lot when I was a kid, and, you know, that put a lot of meanness and toughness into me, and, uh, you know, I'm just... I want to win. I want to be the best at everything I do. And, you know, getting tired in practice, you know, it's all mental. You know, you got to be mentally tough. You got to push yourself through it. And you'll surprise yourself on what you can accomplish. Good stuff. Now, there's a, there's a fad that just me personally, I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone else, but I've noticed in the Colorado scene is, is a quickness that a lot of fighters are, are, are wanting to go pro, in my opinion, too soon. And, and I mean, you have. What, a total of 12 amateur fights right now? I'm going to be fighting my 12th fight. Your 12th fight. What, what is your reason for not going you know, pro already? Well, my reason is, is I didn't have a strong wrestling background coming in this, so I had a little bit of a learning curve, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I just worked my submissions, and, you know, I haven't been fighting that much. I've been focusing on my training, you know, working that ground game, because I don't want to be a one-dimensional fighter that's only good on the feet, you know? So, yeah, work hard on the ground all the time, and... That's, you know, that's my main concern. So you just want to make sure you're, you're ready to make that stuff? Yeah, you know, the ground game is so key as a pro. You know, there's so many great wrestlers fighting in small weight classes, and if you can't, you know, stop a takedown or if you can't hit a submission, then you're done for. You know, you're just going to be a one-dimensional fighter getting his ass kicked all the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can, I can especially see, you know, this leads to my next question. I, you know, from seeing fights of yours from earlier on DVDs that I got my hand, you know, hold of, and seeing the Jamie Addy fight, which I actually had the pleasure of commenting, yeah. I, I, I saw a complete difference. I saw a natural calmness on that on the fight when it went to the ground there. I mean, that's a fight that I'm sure a lot of people watch this might have seen or might have heard about. Yeah. I mean, that was a different Josh Huber. That wasn't, you know, knocking someone out, you know what I mean, and, and, you know, cold. And you, you pretty much kept your calm during that whole fight. Was that to you when you kind of went over that hump? And you saw that you know that all the training paid off. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I worked hard before I came to a gogi, but when I came to a gogi, it's just you're going with a tough guy every round. You know, great wrestlers here, and you know if you're you don't you know a lot of guys hit the ground and they freak out, they start shooting all over the place and wasting energy. You know, I like to stay calm. You know, I don't mind taking a couple punches. You know, as long as I can get mine in. You know, so. You know, there's no point in freaking out when you get put on the ground, you know. It's a fight, you know, there's, you're going to get nervous, but you got to control yourself, you know, control your emotions. Now, this Saturday on March 8th, you're fighting on a PCF card for a title uh, against, um, what's the gentleman's name? Miguel name? Martinez. He's the, he just won the EFX four-man featherweight tournament, so he's the featherweight champion over there. And you're, you're kind of a, I mean, you had enough time to train, but you're kind of a last, almost a last minute, a short-term replacement for this fight, right? Yeah, I took it in like two and a half weeks notice. I'm replacing uh, Ryan Axtell. Um, 
you know, I, I train all the time, you know, I train five days a week all the time, you know, it's not like I came in this fight unprepared, you know, I'm, I don't take anyone lightly, I take every fight like it's, you know, I'm fighting the best guy in the world, you know, I train my ass off. Now, how do you see this fight playing out? Do you see it more like your fight that you had against uh, Kevin Carter, or, or more of the, like the fight you had, you know, which I first commentated, you know, being on, your, on the ground and showing your skills on the ground? Well, he seems like he's definitely willing to strike, you know, which I like to see. If he throws punches with me, you know, I'm going to do what I do, and I'm going to try, you know, knocking him unconscious, you know. But eventually, you know, I think he's going to realize that he can't stand up with me, and he's going to start shooting in, and I'm just going to sprawl, you know. And if it hits the ground, I'm going to be going for submission after submission like I always do, you know. I go for the finish every time, and he seems definitely like he's a finisher himself. So I think it's going to be a great fight. He's he seems like a tough guy. Exactly. Now, how how does it feel to be? You know, I'm sure right now he knows that going into a fight with you that he's going to have to watch out for your hands. Do you feel now that you fought more? Does it still feel like an advantage, like you knew that you had when you first started fighting? Or yeah, you know, I like to think that you know I just have that little fear in people's mind that. I have, you know, serious punching power and just, you know, just the fact that they have to be aware of it, it changes their game plan, you know, so I'm going to look to take advantage of that, you know, get him looking at one thing, hit him with another, you know, hit him often, you know, until he's done for, you know, mm -hmm. I've never won a decision, you know, I go for the finish, I once, uh, eight of my fights are six of my eight fights by knockout, so I'm going to be going for the knockout. Now, uh, if you were to win this, not to look ahead of the fight, but if you were to win it, what are your plans in the future? Well, win or lose, I'm going pro, you know, this is my 12th fight, you know, I feel comfortable in the ring, which was a big issue for me in the beginning, I was so nervous, you know, and just kind of going on instinct, but now I'm, I think of it like as a chess match, you know, and I'm actually quite a chess player, you know, I go through the motions and I set people up, you know, I'm thinking ahead. So, a lot of people don't know that you've actually when you're fighting at 155, you won't even walk around at 155. And even fighting at 145, it's not that big of a cut for you. What weight class do you plan to fight at once you go pro? Well, 135 should be my weight class. I walk around about 150, you know, I'm not a big guy. I've been known for wearing a lot of clothes at weigh-ins just to make the weight, you know, to fight guys that are cutting down. You know, I fought guys 20, 25 pounds bigger than me. And, you know, I think it's a good experience thing to have, you know, I think when I'm fighting at Pro 135, you know, I'm going to be a lot stronger or used to going with stronger guys because I'm usually the smaller guy in there, but that doesn't bother me too much. Now, is there anyone, you, you know, you, any message you'd like to give to people watching this or anyone you'd like to thank? No, I just, you know, I love the fans in MMA, you know, the most dedicated fans in the world, you know, it's, it's a real sport, you know, I don't, you know, people want to make it into a blood sport or whatever, but, you know, like, it's a real sport, and I, t I'm, I consider myself an athlete, you know, I train with athletes, I train, you know, like an athlete, I'm not, you know, just some guy going in there to bash people's skulls in, you know, and as far as Sinemesh, I'd just like to thank Spencer Hooker, you know, I definitely wouldn't be the fighter I am without him, you know, he's taught me so much, and since I've, you know, trained with Agogi, I've noticed, you know, so much of an improvement in myself, you know, I'm a whole different fighter than I used to be. And uh, one last question. What does it feel like to have the stigma of your older brother, Matt Mullen, always over there? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. But. All right, well, this is Chris Zacker and Josh Hewer saying farewell, and uh, hope you come back again to see you next interview.